Hello all you erudite magicians out there. Welcome back to my channel, Erudite Magic. My name is Jeff. If you love everything about the printed word in magic, you are in the right place and we're so glad to have you here. Click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications if you don't want to miss any of our awesome content. Today I don't have a review for you. I want to talk to you about books versus other forms of learning magic. Now I know I have an intrinsic bias to books based on what I say about my channel. However, I want this to be an open and honest discussion among magicians. This is one of those interactive videos, so if you have commentary about books versus other forms of learning, especially how you've been helped by other forms of learning, I want to hear from you. So drop something down in the comments below so that we can start a good discussion and learn from each other. So what do I mean when I say books versus other forms of learning? Other forms of learning to me include DVDs, digital downloads, and mentors. Well, call me woke if you will, but I understand that everyone learns differently. That's why I want to have this discussion. So why do I sign off at the end of every episode of this channel saying, keep reading? Because I believe that reading is very important to the way you learn magic. Reading, or to be fair, other forms of learning, allows us to not only accumulate our own experience, but also the experience of others so that if we see further, it's by standing on the shoulders of giants. There's something absolutely rewarding about mining through a book, looking for the hidden gems and the gold there, and finding it on your own. It's part of the artist's journey. If you want to perform magic that's different than everybody else, with your own artistic vision, I submit that you're going to have to find it from books. Because the very nature of reading a book engages your imagination. You're reading it to yourself in your own voice and style. You're imagining your own environment where the book is happening. You're picturing how the trick might look in your own act. And you're starting to learn the mechanics. No lie. Learning from a book is going to be a much slower process than learning from a video. So when you're just starting out, you might want to just learn from some videos. I'm not suggesting you shouldn't have books. You should. But to learn slights initially, it may be very helpful to have a visual medium, whether that is a video or a mentor, to show you how this should look. Otherwise, it can be very frustrating to a beginner to try to figure out how to do a particular slight. One of the big downsides of books is that you're going to have to find a place to store them. And I am definitely having to buy more and more shelves as my collection grows, but I think that's a very small price to pay for the knowledge that sits there on the shelves. That's one of the aspects I really like about books, is this concept of an anti-library, which is that as you fill the room with knowledge and books on the shelf, even if you haven't read them all, it's a reminder that there's more out there for you to learn. So for me, have I read every single one of my books? No. I try to read the majority of them and I try to get through them as best I can. But every time I walk by my shelf, I'm reminded there are some old friends on the shelf here with things they want to tell me, things that they'd like to share with me, and magic that I can be sharing with others. So let's get into the differences here. What's the difference between a book and other forms of learning? Well, one is, right off the bat, is that you're going to occupy the same physical space as a book. It's going to help me and my learning style because there's something about holding the weight of the book in your hand, turning the pages, that kind of gets things to absorb into my brain more easily. Yes, I understand that you can whip out the iPad and essentially occupy the same space as the iPad. You're not actually in the same space as the person who created the video that you're watching. If there's one thing that this pandemic has taught us, I think it's that we miss the interaction of being together in the same space. Sure, tools like Zoom, video, etc. are all valid options, but there's nothing quite like being in the same space as someone else. So I would put books and mentorship closer together in the same category. That is, you're learning directly from the source. In a way, books allow you to learn from a mentor. A mentor doesn't always have to be someone who picked you. Most of the time, you're doing the asking and asking someone to mentor you. In some cases, this can be done simply by reading their book and listening what they have to tell you. 
Of course, you'll really receive no feedback once you start to perform the routines or practice. You won't get the feedback from that person about what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. So that's kind of a negative of the book. However, the pro of the book is that you can learn from a vast array of different mentors and it can probably be done at a fraction of the cost of getting a mentor, whether that is the fact that you pay someone for instruction or you have to go back and forth and travel to meet that person. Let's take, for example, Juan Tamariz. Juan Tamariz, I'm not probably going to be able to get him to mentor me. However, he's published a number of books that teach his thinking and his style of magic to anybody who wants to learn. Therefore, for the investment of a book, and some of them admittedly are pricey, I can learn from one of the greatest Spanish masters of all time. That same experience to learn from him directly, we know what it would cost because he has opened up some master classes and it costs substantially more. Nothing wrong with that. Kudos to those who've had that ability to go learn from him directly in Spain. Lately, there've been some very interesting and creative solutions to this dilemma of having to learn via video without feedback and actually receiving some feedback with some of the master classes that have been offered and other online forms of learning from one of the magic greats. The beauty of those programs is one, the affordability. It becomes far more affordable to learn from someone via a camera in between you than it does to meet them in person. However, you also lose some of that individual feedback that maybe you want from a lecture or something like that. The problem with the masterclass format is that it's going to be difficult to please everyone. And the more people you get involved that are not part of your local circle of friends, the more likely there's going to be divergent opinions and different things that everybody's seeking to achieve with the masterclass, which could mean that you're going to get less that you could use because your question may get drowned out in the sea of questions. There are pros and cons to both, so you'll have to evaluate what's the most valuable to you. For those who've participated in a masterclass, what value do you think you got out of it and what things were lacking in your opinion? Let's talk about books versus in-person learning. Another form of the in-person learning, even if someone can't become a long-term mentor, is to have a magic lecture. I've been doing this for 70 years and I can tell you how Di Vernon would have done it. The magic lecture has been one of the most popular ways to learn in magic clubs for quite a few decades. And why is that? Because you can have a group of people pool their resources, the club, to bring someone in. As a past president of a local magic club, I can tell you that most lectures are anywhere from $300 to $500 to bring someone in for a few hours to talk about their magic. The beauty of this format is that the person is right there with you and they have a set series of subjects they want to talk about. So you already know if you like this person's magic or theory, you're probably going to like what they have to say in the lecture, but it gives you that opportunity to seek feedback. So if you've been working on something of theirs from either a book or a video that they've done, or you've seen them do something and want to inquire about it, it's easy to do that. In addition, you could just get that one-on-one -on -one time with them to ask your specific question and not have to please everyone in the group. Ever since Gutenberg invented the printing press, books have become a common, affordable, and easy to use solution to learn from other people. Of course, later in the 1900s, technology became available to the common person to be able to record video and pass that along to other people to share their ideas. We saw an explosion in the magic scene in the 90s and 2000s of videos coming to market of different performers, and in some cases, revealing their secrets from their books before. When it comes to books versus videos, I don't think that it has to be either or, and in fact, in some cases, it's not. For example, when I bought the Definitive Sankey set, it actually comes with a DVD. Or, if you've bought Vanishing Inc.'s best-selling book of all time, written by Harapan Ong, then you already know. It also comes with digital download videos of the performances and explanations of some of the tricks, which is a really nice blend for the people who learn differently from different styles. I can watch things on a screen, walk away, and immediately have forgotten what I saw. Not because they're bad, on the contrary. However, when you're watching a video, it's a more of a passive activity. You're just absorbing the content, kind of like watching your favorite TV show. There's very little interaction with this process. Someone's talking, displaying, showing you what to do, you're listening, watching, and observing. But if you're not doing something like taking notes or actively engaging in that process, 
it's going to be more easy for your brain to just turn off. So what are some of the advantages of video? Like I talked about before, learning slights, it's going to be much easier, especially with good camera work and good angles, to see how certain slights should look, what angles you have to watch out for, what your fingers should be doing. It's much easier for someone to talk and show you and learn that quickly than it is for someone to write out and describe what each finger should be doing. So sometimes in books, unless it's a really good author, you'll find that they leave out some of those details and you're left to figure it out on your own. The one issue I've seen with videos, and this isn't universal, but what we often see is that people will perform just like what they see in the video. So if you learn from Michael Amar's Easy to Master series, you probably have a weird giggle in the middle of your performances. <laughs> Okay, well that's not true. What we do know is that many people who learned from Slidini ended up adopting an Italian accent, whether or not they were actually Italian. It's just the nature of the beast. You imitate what you respect and want to become. When you read a book, you have no preconceived notions about that. Let's discuss for one second about the portability of different options. I can't tell you how many times I've gone somewhere and I've taken a pamphlet with me in my work bag or thrown into the car with me so that if I ran into unexpected delays, I would be able to read and learn something. Most of the time, this is accompanied with my journal. You do remember me talking about the journal, right? So that I can write down any ideas that pop into my head while I'm reading. That's the other really nice thing about books is that there's the automatic pause button feature. If I'm reading something and I have a flash of brilliance, or maybe it's just something else, I can stop what I'm doing and write it down without really losing my place or having to adjust things. Regardless, books are typically more portable. If you have a DVD collection, for example, you're not going to lug around all your DVDs with you. Today, with many of the cloud storage solutions that are out there, it's really easy to store your videos online and access them anywhere you have an internet connection. And that's becoming easier and easier wherever you go. However, to me, it's just a little less convenient to have to pull up my phone, go to the folder, find the video I want, and all of us who have Netflix know there's definitely decision fatigue. When you're scrolling through thing after thing after thing trying to figure out, do I want to watch this? And it sounds pretty good, but maybe there's something else that I'd rather watch. You can get burned out and just turn off the whole thing. Maybe that's not your problem and that's good, but that's where I find myself. There's one aspect that I have yet to see videos equal books in this area, and that is learning magic theory. Very few people would buy a video that doesn't include tricks. Magicians are all about tricks, tricks, tricks for the most part. However, if you're looking to learn the real secrets of magic, which is about your character development, the theory of magic, how it works, why it works, what you should do differently within your tricks to make them work, I've only found that you can find that from books, which is why I continue to pursue and advance books to you. In my opinion, there's very little that can beat a well-done book. Something with adequate visual instruction, whether that's photos or line drawings that explain what your fingers should be doing, a good writer who can describe in detail what should be happening, and an open mind of the person reading the book. Someone with imagination to see themselves doing this effect and seeing how it might fit into their act. Plus, as you learn from different people, you're able to pull the aspects of things that you want from them and substitute different slights based on what you know and what works for your particular character. When I walk by my books, I often hear in my head the words that Jamie Ian Swiss penned in his review in Genie magazine of the card magic of Nick Trost. I am a book. Nothing less, nothing more. Now sit down with me a while. Put your feet up and let's spend some time together. And as with any good book, like any good friend, it will be time well spent. What books do you consider to be friends? Like I said, lots of room for different opinions. I wanna hear from you. What do you think is the best way for you to learn? I don't think it can be said that it's a universal way to learn, but for me, I find myself learning the most and the best from books. They ignite my imagination, they allow me to put together ideas from different sources, and they're portable. Lectures are my second favorite way to learn because I enjoy interacting with the artists, hearing what they have to say, but also being free to ask those questions about things that don't make sense to me or that I'd like to know more about. DVDs and digital downloads are about the same for me. I have used them, I continue to use them, I'm sure I will use them in the future. I just don't find them quite as valuable to me as a learning tool. Of course, your mileage can and will vary. So let's hear from you down in the comments below. What's your favorite way to learn and what are some of your favorite resources to learn? 
I hope this is a good discussion for us. And if you have questions specifically about some of the things that I said, drop a comment down below. I'm an open book. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for telling your friends about this channel. It means a lot to see your comments. Even though I'm discussing the differences, I'm still going to say it. Until next time, keep reading.